Welcome back. This week is all about functions. This is the first of two videos on functions for this week. Now, if you recall, a function is nothing more than a specific reusable sequence of actions. And you've seen and used lots of them already. The print function, the input function, and the data type conversion functions int and stir and list, to name a few. But how are these functions made? Or more directly, can you make your own? The short answer here is yes, absolutely. But you might already be wondering, why would you even want to make your own functions? Well, there are lots of reasons. One is pretty obvious. You can reuse your code. You only write that code once, but you can use it multiple times. Your code will also improve because you'll write fewer lines of code, therefore fewer possible errors. And code, because there are fewer lines, will be easier to read, and the code will ideally be self-explanatory. As an example here, do you remember print, the print function? It's actually 129 lines of code in C, which you don't need to worry about. It's a different programming language. But if you'd like to see what print actually does under the hood, feel free to click on that link. The point is, anytime we want to put something onto the console, all we have to do is say print and put those things that we want on the console in between those parentheses. We don't have to write every single time we want to put something on the console, 129 lines of code. This is the power of functions. So time for some concepts. Utilizing functions come in actually two parts, the function definition and the function call. You've been doing the second part since week one, calling functions. This part is likely familiar. To call a function, just say its name, follow it with parentheses, and potentially add something between those parentheses. So let's now focus actually on the function definition because that's new material for this week. Before you make coffee, you have to have some sort of instructions on how to do so, right? That's what the function definition is going to do for us. It's going to give the program the instructions for how to do whatever it is you want it to do. This obviously needs to be done before you call the function or the program won't know what to do. In other words, you need to know how to make a cup of coffee first before you make a cup of coffee. And recognize here for completeness of the analogy, actually making the coffee is equivalent to calling the function. So let's immediately see what this looks like in Python. As you can see, the syntax for creating a function is pretty straightforward. There's a new keyword def followed by the name you would like to give the function followed by parentheses, which might have something between them, followed by a colon. Anything directly below this line and indented will be part of the function definition. So that's where statements is in this example on the right. Here are actually two examples of function definitions. The one on the left is called spam, and it prints out spam, spam, spam. The function definition on the right asks the user for what the temperature is, and if the weather happens to be, if the temperature happens to be over 80, we're assuming, of course, that this is in Fahrenheit, then it seems hot. Otherwise, I bet it's cold. To utilize the newly written function, here's how you call it. You've been calling functions since week one, so this should come as no surprise. Here are some examples of calling the earlier defined functions. Spam, spam, show weather. And you can see the output on the right. It does seem hot at 90 degrees. Recognize that because your code is interpreted one line at a time, it's important to make sure that functions are defined before they're used. Otherwise, the interpreter won't know what you're talking about. Also recognize the flow control here. When the function is called, the Python interpreter jumps to the function definition and runs the code inside of it. And when it's done, it returns to the spot it previously jumped from. This will be really important later. Now recognize here, it's actually good practice to use a function to start your program, which means that the bulk of your code, except for other function definitions, will actually be placed inside of this new function that I'm effectively referencing here. And the simple solution is to create a function which calls the others, the main function. Main is your primary entry point. As you can see, the main function definition wraps up all the code that was in the past written outside of the function definition. And in the final line of code, which is the first line that actually gets run, 
there is a call to this new function called main. Now recognize that this is a Python programming convention. In other words, main is often the starting point of a larger program and will call other functions as needed. It takes no arguments and returns no values. These terms, note, will be covered soon, actually in the second video. Functions also can be defined in any order for what it's worth in your code base, as long as a function call to main is called at the end of the file. Let's look at a larger example that uses several custom functions. This program actually defines three custom functions, one of which is main. And if we look at a more detailed version of this code, you can see that main is called at the end of the code base, as is convention. When main is run, it calls the other custom functions, as you can see in the definition of the main function itself. There are those other two user-defined functions, announce greeting and show weather. And you can obviously, uh, just as a side note here, write other lines of code in your main function, which are not calls to other custom functions. You can add other prints or other inputs in there if necessary. For instance, make variable assignments. But for this particular example, all we're doing is calling those two custom functions. Now that you've learned about how to actually write functions, it's a good time to talk about namespace. Just like mutability is a property of all data types, namespace is a property of all objects in Python. So every object in Python has a namespace, variable, functions, everything has a namespace. And an object's namespace is the place where the object can be seen and accessed from. For what it's worth, this can also be described by the term scope, which is effectively the same idea. So for instance, if an object was defined in main, then it is in the main namespace. You could also say that it is scoped to the main function. But why this discussion about namespace? Well, now that you've learned how to actually write your own functions, you'll also be creating new namespaces because that's what happens when you write a new function. And because objects are only able to be seen and accessed from the namespace they were created in, you will need to take care in your programs now to remember where those objects namespaces are so that your code runs smoothly. There are really two ways to categorize namespaces for what it's worth. Either an object is in the global namespace or it is in some local namespace. If an object is created outside of any other function, in other words, tabbed out all the way to the left, it is said to be a global object. So in the code on the left here, it turns out that func1 and func2, these two new functions, are global functions because they are outside of any other function. Therefore, they can be seen and accessed from anywhere. If an object is created inside a function, it is said to be a local object, local to that function or to that namespace. In other words, the rain variable in func2 and the air quality variable in func1 are both local variables because they can only be accessed from their respective functions. Which actually means that if we try running this code, you can see that rain is trying to be accessed in func1 and air quality is trying to be accessed in func2, but because their namespaces are respectively for rain func2 and air quality func1, your code's gonna crash. Rain was not defined inside of func1. It's outside of that namespace. The program can't see it, your code crashes. That is it for this video. In the next video, you'll be learning about how to get data into and out of functions. Thanks for being here.